Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today I have a special guest here in studio, Kat Evans, who does some amazing macro photography. Today we're going to be talking specifically about water drop photography and some of those tiny little worlds. But this fabulous photographer is also great with landscape photography and you'll often find her along the central coast of California early, early morning at the beach or exploring the countryside around where she lives. Welcome, Kat. So glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. All right. So let me go ahead and switch screens here and we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to run through a short presentation that she put together on her water drop pictures, show you a few pictures, things that she does behind the scenes, and then we'll do a quick edit in Luminar. So I'll go ahead and let you have the floor. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well out there. I'll just run through this and if you have any questions, please put it up in the chat and Angela will field that for me as I go through them. So this is a type of photography that I just enjoy doing. I, I happened on it, I played with it, and I keep going back for more. And I started it in about 2012 and um, I just I just set it up and, and have fun. So this is... Uh, okay. Not working right? No, not working. Let me go this way here. All that. right, that's fine. That works. Okay. So this is actually one of the first ones I ever took and uh, purely experimental, but it's still one of my one of my favorites. Um, macro lens. I use a 100 millimeter f2.8. I shoot with Canon. Uh, tripod is necessary. Shutter release cable, although I use now two second delay, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, different light sources. Here's some of the backdrop that I use. I use a simple setup in my kitchen. I prefer to use natural light. So that's what I do. I have a skylight. I have a uh, difference of equipment. I have a short list if you're interested in that as well. I generally use what's called a plamp and it's this piece right here to hold a subject in front of a background and that's just poster board and some scrapbook papers that I have bought at the local hobby store. Um, flowers is a favorite of mine though it's fun to use inanimate objects as well and for me I, I love to listen to music when I'm shooting. I, it's just a fun time for me. Uh, light sources, I said I, I like natural light, I prefer it. I have a loom cube that I can use uh, I have under cabinet lights, and there's been times when I just hold the flashlight sometimes to get light in a certain spot if it's not cooperating naturally. Uh, poster board, I have some black velvet materials, different kinds of wrapping paper, scrapbook papers, uh, clamp, clamps, and clips. I, a syringe and a spray bottle. I prefer the syringe because I can place the water drops where I, where I would like them to be water and or glycerin. I generally just use water. I'm, I'm not a fan of glycerin. It's a little too sticky for me. Uh, a stand for elevating the subject behind uh, whatever I'm going to put the water drops on. A music source sets the mood and my assistant, my cat sometimes, gives me a hand. And then uh, <laughs> simple background a bowl of fruit to prop it up, keep it there, hopefully, sometimes it tips over. My trusty uh, cat, his name is Chris, he likes to sit there while I work. Now, like I said, I, I prefer flowers and natural and unique shapes, colors, leaves and stems, and not everything will hold a drop of water. In fact, I'm really surprised at how many things do not hold a drop of water, so it's, it's truly trial and error. And then when I get a little bored and I want to try and get a little creative, I'll try some inorganic items, kitchen tools, office items, memorabilia, uh, and maybe even think of a theme for a holiday. Uh, there's a, a sample of different backdrops that I use. And this one is, is all glittery. So it, a lot of times it will give a, a nice bokeh. This one also has some glitter in it. And this piece down here is just a piece of uh, plastic netting. My settings, I, I try, I keep it at, at ISO 100 to keep it sharp. And depending on, 
how I want the focal range, uh, f2.8 to 9. Sometimes I'll even go higher than that. Uh, and, I, and I generally shoot in manual mode and just adjust everything as I'm seeing it through the back. And uh, one thing is to turn off the image stabilization and autofocus because that can uh, contribute to a vibration to get things out of focus. And I use live mode and I focus from the back. I'm moving too fast. No, you're doing great. Okay. I just want to say a quick hello to JGmail28, Bruce, Pat, Russell. Glad you guys are able to be here today. And congratulations on to Russell and Pat on getting your shots. Glad you got that out of the way. And back to the presentation. A <laughs> um, couple of the backstory there. There's the, the plant up here, just holding the flower inverted with the, these flowers in back. I generally shoot with them, you know, two, three, four inches. I, I play with them. I move them forward and backwards to see what type of reflection I'm getting in the actual water drop. And over here on this one, it was just a sprout. Very, very tiny. There's a picture that is further down the line that will show you the water drop on that sprout just to give you some scale. And here's that plastic netting. It actually held water very well. A Gerber a daisy. A paintbrush, because I, I kind of thought it looked like I was painting with water. A eucalyptus leaf. My father's dog tags. I did that for Memorial Day. And I've always wanted to try to shoot these, but they're a lot more difficult than I thought they were. They're number one, they're very, very small. And uh, it's really hard to get them to hold water. So I'll just run through a, a few different pictures different ideas. And this one I did for Halloween. It was, some, um, it was actually a scarf, the black cat. And then I tried flipping it just to see what it would look like. And then here's the one with the, the little tiny sprout just to show the scale. And this day I took everything outside because I wanted some natural light and the winds were still so that I could do that. Gary says it's like tiny lens balls. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. awesome. And hello, Joanne. Glad you're able to be here today. Yeah, I love looking through the macro lens just to, it's, my eyes cannot see what I can see through my macro. And then I just, I get creative. I just try to have fun. That's, that's the main thing. And then this was something I just saw on YouTube, so I thought I'd give it a try. Clean a piece of glass with rain -X, spray it with water, put it over the top of some subjects, and, and see what I got. And it looked like floating bubbles. my office drawer <laughs> and then there's a, a picture of again the the plant holding the rose with that background Jerry asks when do you prefer monochrome I think it depends on the subject I the monochrome I really liked for the circles the stripes um, I think with patterns I prefer the the monochrome and it depends. You know, if the color's just not doing it for me, I'll, I'll put it in black and white and see, just see how it transposes. And this is just one little tendril off of our grapevine from the backyard. And that I think is actually from a business card holder. <laughs> and a necklace that my daughter gave me. <laughs> 
Yeah, I might not have mentioned that. This is also my mom, so. <laughs> we, it's fortunate that we enjoy the same thing. Yes. Differently, but the same. So from there, let's go ahead and switch over to Luminar AI, do a really quick edit and see how she puts Luminar AI to work. We're using the brand new update too, which just came out today. So hopefully you guys have had a chance to download and install that and have some fun. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. We'll be happy to answer them as we go along. All right, so right click and adjustments and revert to original. She still has to help me. <laughs> All right, and then maybe over to edit. All and, right. And her mouse is different than mine too. <laughs> so I, I try to keep it simple. A lot of times I'll just stick with composition. I'll, I'll try a couple of different things. I seem to really be liking 16.9 and, and 21.9 lately. And I don't see a lot that I would do different with this except to crop out that one little piece of nugget or berry or whatever it is over there. And Jerry says, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And Pat says, these are beautiful. I had a really good macro lens back in the 70s for my SLR. And it's more fun than the law allows with it. I would love to have one now. Well, hopefully you can get one again someday soon, Pat. If not, try some extension tubes. It's a less expensive way to jump into macro photography. Yeah, I think that was actually probably the first lens I saved up for just because it just seemed like it would be a fun thing for me. I don't, I don't use it very often, but when I do, I always enjoy it. So besides uh, just checking on the composition, um, I usually go into enhance and accent uh, details. And the one thing I'll point out to you is I'm not very technical. A lot of times, if I don't catch it in camera, that's I'm going to work with what I have. And that's why you'll notice that some of the detail on this is soft in the background because I don't do focus stacking. I just uh, try to keep everything pretty much on the same focal plane to make it work for me. I like being able to pop the details a little bit. I, I do like good contrast. And then besides vignetting, which I'll, I'll do in a minute, um, I want to lighten these up here just a little bit. So a Jerry asks, what's, what are the feathery objects? They are... <clears throat> I want to say they're almost like dandelion seeds, but they were something different. I'm going, I, sometimes I collect things, so I have to try and remember what it was. In this case, actually, because it has a little dried petal on it, I think these were from some Gerbera daisies that I had that just went to seed while I had them in a vase, and they were all over the counter, so I just scooped them up and saved them. They're tiny enough to where I actually had to use tweezers to put them because this little stem was maybe only about that big. It was pretty small. Very cool. Okay, all I really want to do here is expose this in here just a little bit. So you're just using the local masking to bring out details in specific little areas. Right. Okay. And that's that's really pretty much about it. I can see I want to going to bring up the structure on those just a little bit. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's that's it. And then I'll go back into the tools, uh, vignette, and I, I did learn from my daughter. So I do like to take the vignetting all the way down and a good feather on it. And I, let's see, I'm going to pull that up just a, a little bit. I do too. Ask anybody who watches regularly, I almost always forget to click off of choose subject. Did it? It didn't. It went. Did it? Yeah. So now you can go ahead and click oh, on the eyeball. See, this is, <laughs> this is the difference. I was looking for it over here and it's over there. Yep. Okay. So there's the before. Very, very slight. In the after. 
well, it's nothing wrong with a good natural edit. It's, um, you know, a lot of times those of us who do this on a daily basis, we tend to get carried away and excited with the adjustments and kind of go a little bit overboard. So it's nice to see a subtle edit and, and really take time to, for somebody to get it right in the camera. I mean, I think that's, that's still a very important feature, even though we have all of these wonderful AI tools to get things right in the camera is still so very important. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and having a guest here in studio is a lot of fun. Uh, I loved it. Um, if you guys like this episode, make sure you hit thumbs up there in YouTube and let us know or let our producers know that you like this episode. And if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to go ahead and post them. I do check them after the show. So in case you're not watching this live, uh, with that, I want to wish you guys a wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you at the next coffee break. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs>